Okay. After having done black, why do we do black surface analysis first? Easy, easy say to understand because we don't have this epsilon coming in. So it is a good emitter. It is the best emitter. It is it is good in all respects. So now we say okay, having understood black body enclosure or a multi control L sorry here. So we are now looking at diffuse grey surface. Again to reiterate what is diffuse surface? And grey independent of wavelength. Okay, everybody is aware. We spent so much time we spent so much time talking things wavelength and direction. But when it comes to real radiation problems, we throw that out actually in, <laughs> in engineering. I, we never are bothered about wavelength actually. That is why engineers do not get Nobel <laughs> Prize. So, probably that is why we make life simple. Okay. So, if we assume surfaces in an enclosure to be opaque, what is opaque? What does it mean in terms of radiation? And nothing, nothing is nothing. So either it is absorbed or or reflected. Okay. So they are non-transparent, diffuse emitter, and reflectors, and radiation properties are independent of wavelength. So everything is nice. So I can use formulae. Okay. Each surface of the enclosure is isothermal. Okay, both incoming and outgoing radiation are uniform. So life has been made so simple for us. Everything good. Now radiosity, of course, again definition is emission plus reflected component of incident irradiation. So J i, if a surface i is there. Epsilon i e b i represents the emissive power that is heat flux coming out of that surface by virtue of its finite temperature. The epsilon represents that it is a grey surface plus reflectivity times the incident radiation or irradiation g i that fraction plus this one is j i. We have assumed transmittivity is 0, so this goes to 0. So, alpha plus rho is equal to 1, so rho i is equal to 1 minus alpha i and this one. What is the inherent assumption in using alpha i equal to epsilon i? Kirchhoff's law, what is the inherent assumption? Temperature is the same temperature of which is the same? Both surfaces is the same. So, J i therefore becomes, why do I want to write it in terms of epsilon? Why what happens if I keep this alpha i there? Alpha i becomes what? See, why, why, why can't we sit with this? Reflectivity. So actually, I don't know the answer for this. I'm asking no, so why? Why? Should we want to ultimately we want to reduce the number of unknowns. That is that is so, probably the simplest. So we want to and easiest thing to measure is reasonably is emissivity. 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 I think that so, is probably so. So that is the it is a I think it is an expediency. It is an engineering Necessi expediency or engineering necessity which again drives us to throw out all the things and make all sorts of assumptions and end Come up with to? only one unknown emissivity, measure that and keep using it. Okay. So, therefore, J will be equal to epsilon E B i plus this is 1 minus alpha which becomes 1 minus epsilon G i. Okay. Next this E b i will be sigma T i to the power 4 not a problem. G i is the radiation energy incident on surface per unit time per unit area watt per meter square. J i equal to E b i equal to sigma T i raised to 4 for a black body. 
okay, that is also logical because for a black body all these things will not be there. Now, what happens? This j I have calculated, I am coming there. For one surface I have written this equation j. If I have multiple surfaces which are interacting with each other, net radiation heat transfer. So, we wrote for a black surface very easily sigma a 1 f 1 to 2 t 1 raise to 4 minus t 2 raise to 4 black body. That was so nice because we did not have to deal with j, we just had to deal with E b. Now, I have j. So, there is a j from this surface, there is a j from the other surface also which is coming in. So, in an interaction what we have to do q i is nothing but radiation leaving entire surface i minus radiation incident on the entire surface. So, a i j i represents radiation leaving. What is j? Again let us not lose sight. j is epsilon E b i plus rho g i. Again there is a g here minus radiation incident on the entire surface. So, a i g i. Okay. So, this aspect has to be clarified. So, this j I will substitute here from the previous slide as this quantity epsilon i e b i plus 1 minus epsilon g i. Shall I write this or is this okay? So, I will also make it, I will also work it out because q i yeah a i j i minus g i. From the previous slide I will write j i is equal to epsilon i e b i plus I do not want to memorize what was it rho i g i rho I do not like. So, I will write 1 minus alpha again I do not like that. So, I will write this as 1 minus epsilon i g i See, because I do not like so many things I throw them away that is all. So, what do I get g again here see look at the first expression I have g what does g depend on all other surfaces. Na? So, I have to keep budget this much is coming from here this much is coming from here this much. So, I have to become an accountant. I do not have the time as an engineer to account for this much energy from here, here, here. So, again I will eliminate that g into some things which I like, which I know because my field of reference frame of reference is the surface i. So, everything from j, j I mean 2, 3, 4 etcetera I will write in terms of surface i only. So, I will write this g i which is energy coming from all other surfaces to surface i as j i minus epsilon i e b i divided by 1 minus epsilon i. So, what do I do? I want to eliminate this. So, I will substitute it there. Therefore, q i is equal to a i times j i minus j i minus epsilon i e b i divided by 1 minus epsilon i. What does this give me? A i, I will let us do the maths here, take it up j i minus epsilon i j i minus j i plus epsilon i e b i divided by 1 minus epsilon i, j is cancel, j i cancels off, I get epsilon i a i divided by 1 minus epsilon i e b i minus j i not done as yet. What is this e b i minus j i telling me? Correct? Correct. Finish, finish. Actual gray surface. So, the difference potential is a function of what? the surface characteristics of the body that is whether epsilon is coming in there. Is that correct? What did she say? Madam would you like to repeat for the benefit of others? this numerator this quantity E b i minus j i what is it? 
एनर्जी <coughs> it is become less because it is a diffuse gray surface and that difference that change is given by ebi minus ji and beautifully it will come out qi therefore will be ebi minus ji divided by 1 minus epsilon i by epsilon i ai this quantity in the denominator is called as surface resistance can space resistance that was in the space between the two surfaces this is physically you are not able to put a picture to it like convection conduction or something but this thing strongly deals with the surface properties poorer the emissivity what happens this is value epsilon is epsilon is 1 what happens to this what does it mean physically the black body correct no no surface no surface resistance so whatever i have drawn here in this diagram very nicely drawn see here this ebi will collapse to ji or sorry ji will collapse to ebi if the surface were a black surface correct that means this resistance would be equal to zero okay when i put it here i will it will look as something by zero that is not the way you should look at it you should look at it from a physical point of view ebi and ji will become equal to zero themselves will be the same so the numerator itself will become zero so there is no difference by virtue of its surface characteristic because it is a black surface black body so this quantity we will call as the surface resistance and this is the potential difference or the difference between the characteristics because of a if a, because of it being a gray surface compared to a black surface so ebi minus ji and qi represents a net radiation heat transfer corresponding to whatever we have in the electrical analogy okay so if i have a general geometry like this a surface which is gray another surface which is also diffuse gray what is the net radiation heat transfer given by so black body always i i can remember very easily sigma a1 f12 t1 raised to 4 minus t2 raised to 4 here i can't remember like that because in addition to the space resistance which was there even for black body i have two additional resistances which are there because of the surfaces being non black or gray and that is what is manifesting itself in terms of these three resistances what is it doing what is this additional resistance doing to the heat transfer reducing isn't that logical black surface heat transfer is maximized here my heat transfer is reduced because i physically ha having more obstructions to the path one of the obstruction even if the two bodies are the same if two parallel plates are there black same geometry two parallel gray plates are there a1 fij would be the same so space resistance would have been the same i am impeding energy transfer from one to two because of the surface okay so these two are always going to be non zero even if these were the same okay so what i am saying is qij is ai ji fij minus i would recommend all of you please write i will i will also write now that is easy because these are very trivial we can write and and the problem is it looks obvious when we read it okay honestly it looks obvious when we read it only when we write it we know oh, why why is this why is it j why not e so 
So, Q i j is nothing but, so I have two surfaces, one is i and another is j, this is at t 1, this is at t 2, this is E b 1 and E b 2, let me say E b i and E b j and I have three resistances 1, 2 and 3. This is R 1, I will write R 2, R 3 just for simplicity when heat is flowing this way Q i j. Okay. So, Q i j therefore, is equal to help me please. Why E b i? It is a diffuse gray surface diffuse gray. J i that is a flux J i times A i watts ho gaya then F i j very good. This is energy going from 1 reaching 2 minus madam means ok. Savarkar is having his hand on his head. Savarkar, ok, not ok. No, he had his hand like this. So, J, J, A, J, watts again, F, J, I, ok. Anybody has difficulty in writing this? Hopefully, no. Okay. Now, I will use u factor A algebra A i F i j and this one are the same. I like to deal with surface i, so I will keep this form throw away this form. So, this is going to be A i F i j j i minus j j. Therefore, q i j therefore, is j i minus j j divided by 1 over A i F i j. Okay. So, J is who gives me this J values? I do not know, correct. So, we have to come back finally to this one. This quantity is, of course, our same concept what we had for black surface space resistance. Only thing what was changing is the numerator black body if you remember what was it sigma t 1 raise to 4 minus sigma t 2 raise to 4 divided by 1 by a 1 f 1 2 or replace i by 1 and 2 by j. This is the same nothing has changed only thing which has changed is the numerator. So, conceptually both are the same this is the potential difference here is the potential difference for heat transfer or for the diffuse gray surface, this is the potential difference for a black body that is it. Okay. So, q i j is that. Now, I have to deal with the surface temperatures between the two. Okay. So, this is what j 1 j 2 or j i j j. So, if I make the diagram a little bit better, three resistances were there this was surface 1 E b i j i. This is actually inside the surface you can say this is a resistance which is there because of the surface property. This is a resistance which is there because of geometry 1 by a i f i j and there is a resistance which is there. This is 1 minus epsilon i epsilon i a i 1 minus epsilon j epsilon j a j. Okay. So, what this resistance tells me is the reduction or the drop in the driving in the heat transfer or the energy content because of it being a gray surface. So, therefore, my net energy transfer would be 
it is just summation of the resistances between these surfaces and I can write all the resistances together. So, if I have multiple surfaces, so for I, I do not have to go through this here, I will just show the slides here. If I have an n surface enclosure, conservation of energy tells me q i is nothing but summation of this. So, it will interact with surface 1 will interact with 2, 3, 4. You can take 3 surfaces and deal with it, it is easy. And then I will write this as this form and putting it like this, I will have this is surface 1, this whole thing is related to surface 1. Okay. Though we are drawing this as the surface 1, this resistance is associated with that surface. Okay. This is nothing but 1 minus epsilon 1 divided by epsilon 1 a 1, this quantity that is this R i. Okay. So, my if I have to draw this point j i will essentially be what is there beyond surface 1. Okay. This is interacting with 1 to n minus 1 to n, several such surfaces are there and each of these j 1, j 2, j n minus 1 and j n will be linked by a resistance to the corresponding E b 1, E b 2, E b n minus 1 and E b n. Through which resistance? Same surface resistance, only thing different will be it will be 1 minus epsilon 1 by a 1 epsilon 1, 1 minus epsilon 2 by a 2 epsilon 2, 1 minus epsilon n minus 1 by a n minus 1 epsilon n minus 1, so on and so forth. I think everybody has got it. So, if there is a chorus answer and all there is no disc, uh, discontinuity, this correct that means. Okay. So, the net radiation therefore, we can calculate and I think all of us know to do this. So, if I have to solve these things, matrix method will always be there. So, I will just write, I think solution methodology we can see. Okay. So, if you are dealing with two surface enclosure, okay, 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 1, okay, only two surfaces are there in the enclosure. I can write q 1 is equal to minus q 2 and these are the surface characteristic associated with this surface and this is the surface 2. So, I will write this in general as E b 1 minus E b 2 divided by these resistances. What is it actually? It is essentially this. Okay. E b 1 j 1 j 2 E b 2. What is known? What are known quantities here? E b 1 is known. I do not like this. E b 1, what is E b 1? Sigma t 1 raised to 4. E b 2 is known, sigma t 2 raised to 4. J 1 and J 2 are known? No, J 1 is not known, J 2 is not known. Epsilon 1 known, A 1 known. So, this one is also known. Similarly, this one is also known. A 1 f 1 to 2 is that known? Yeah, if I know the geometry view factor is known. So, this one is also known. Do I need these two to solve for the heat transfer rate? No, I do not need them. So, what I will do is q therefore, is equal to E b 1 minus E b 2 divided by summation of r. I know each of the r's get the value of q. Then I will write this q is equal to E b 1 minus j 1 divided by 1 minus epsilon 1 epsilon 1 a 1 everything is known j 1 is obtained j 2 is also obtained. What does this mean j 1 and j 2? Why, why, what am I calculating? Why am I calculating j 1 j 2? E b 1 and j 1 are different, right? E b 1 is because of its temperature as it was a black body, E b 1. What is j 1? It is, it is uh, emission because it is a non black body and also a reflected component of what is coming in. Okay. 
So, we can solve for that and that is given here to you guys. So, q 1 2 can be obtained based on these values and once I know this other things can be obtained. Small object in a large cavity very very straightforward a 1 by a 2 is approximately equal to 0 view factor f 1 to 2 is almost equal to 1. Therefore, we can deal with it exactly like a black body. What is this? He will tell. Uh, my question is, can we put any example for this? This steel ball, heated steel ball, putting in a very large just to, or maybe a small thermocouple. I have put inside for measuring furnace Furnace inside So usually for furnace, we will see directly that equation. So we keep wondering. So, this is how, how did it come? come? So, this is how we understand. So, even though it is a non gray surface, a black. The thing is that it is dependent on the emissivity of the thermocouple. It is not de dependent on the emissivity of the furnace. Why? Why? Who is doing that? Because of? It's very, very small area of lung. A 1 is so small compared to A 2. So, what actually what is Q 1 to 2? We transfer from 2 to 1 and 1 to 2 both are there. Na? One of them is so small compared to the other right because the area ratio I mean area is so small. Am I right? Okay. Infinitely large parallel plates again these are all classic problems. I am sure all of you have assigned these and when I was studying, we used to just remember them without understanding. Yeah, that yeah. was the problem. That's why, although it may sound very trivial to you, but I am trying to see one of the things that we want to emphasize, and hopefully this will change with time. You know, next five to ten years, hopefully this culture of not memorizing and trying to get the formula on the spot if needed, that culture should come. Otherwise. For parallel plates it is like this, for triangles it is like this, for circle it is like this. You know thermodynamics when we studied, we had problems constant pressure, constant volume work done. So, I used to learn constant pressure, P, P will come out V1 minus V2, constant volume work is 0, isothermal there will be a formula, adiabatic there will be another. Why so many formulas? Everything comes from PV raised to n is equal to constant. If you if you can derive PV raised to n is constant, and then PV raised to n equal to constant work done will be a big derivation. Oh my God, such a big thing! Ultimately, it is all the same thing. So that that conceptual understanding was never there, is never there, and that is unfortunate part. So we just give so much information. Take this, take this, take this. No, all I remember is one black surface. So if I can. If I can always come back to the black surface by cancelling terms, my derivation is also correct. So, one very good thing with my PhD guide used to say, any complicated problem, anything, always have a baseline case. If these, these, these go to go to 0 or are, are very small order of magnitude, can you get a known solution from this? If the remaining term is like your known solution for an existing problem, then you are correct. I think that, that thought has to be uh, uh, emphasis. I do not know how much more to tell this. Okay, anyway. All of this analysis we have said in no without any confusion that no medium is participating. It is like perfect vacuum. Once the participating medium comes, then things get much more. This is only for vacuum. This is only for vacuum. But in furnaces, for example, also I say furnace, what is furnace filled up, filled up with generally? So, so it may not be such a bad idea, but yes, if there are gases inside, yes, I should be worried about. I am not teaching, I have the material, we have the material for participating medium. For that matter, actually, the best book for this part of radiation is Hallman, not Modest. Hallman. Actually, this network and even participating medium, Patel's charts are there. Actually, emissivities get decreased. How much they get decreased are again functions of pressures and how, how much more fractions are there which we represent in terms of partial pressures to answer your question. But for UG, we never teach participating medium. And 
same thing what is there in Holman, Chandra has put almost in almost same format. But Holman is this portion I like in Holman, especially the network method, what we did. And in fact, he goes much more than what we are going to do. In fact, I would recommend that when you go back home, please open because I see in all of your reference books. Holman is Holman is so Holman. There are n number of problems, even with enclosures and enclosures open, lot of solved problems. Once, if we ask the students to write the set of equations, let them not solve them, so, but at least they know how to in fact, formulate a problem. So that's there in all words. Where did we land? The question was participating in all But in all of this, they are not considering participating. Okay? In fact, uh, one this again digression, but just because of the nature of discussion, uh, I had the good or bad fortune. Bad fortune because I was not ready for it. Good fortune because the person is really great, modest teach conduction he transfer for me. Uh, very good teacher, but very unsympathetic towards students. Anyway, so his questions would be, please formulate the problem, do not attempt to solve it. So, formulation of the problem is one of the most important things. Okay. Hardly we have solved problems. All he used to say is you can solve, you can write a computer program, do this, do that. Yeah, we have solved problems, but formulating a, a situation into a mathematical form is the most difficult thing because you have to understand, you have to assume, you have to put it in words and go to the right appropriate equation and make simplification. So, that aspect unfortunately, our UG curriculum does not emphasize. It says given this, 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 what can I get? 5 are unknown, 6 is the known, I mean 5 known quantities, get the 6th one, permutation combination of that is what yeah, is it. We should avoid plug-in problems, what we call as plug-in problems. That is mundane here, anybody will do. And you know one thing is not known and you will anyway get. We should not give any question which is plug-in if a problem is plug-in type, then that question is not worth to be in a question. See, that can be given for assignments where the student is exposed to it for the first time. When he is doing it for the first time, he knows how to use the formula, which table to go to get this value, etc. But exam, no, you do not have to give. Because none of the real life problems are plug-in. And you are saying, you are giving data handbooks anyways. So, if they have all the relations, so we can give them all thinking questions. Anyway, so, parallel plates, the areas will be the same. So, what will happen to this? I am on the correct page, right? What will happen to this equation? Areas will come out a1, a2, everything is the same, it will go in the numerator. So, I will get a sigma t1 raised to 4 minus t2 raised to 4, and this epsilon 1, epsilon 2, etc., this one will basically become equal to. 1 and what happens is 1 by epsilon 1 minus 1 plus 1 plus 1 by epsilon 2 minus 1. One of these plus 1 and minus 1 cancels that is how you are left with this equation. Okay, so, this not rocket science. So, spheres, cylinder etcetera I can do no, no big deal exercise problem is also there. So, conceptually what have we learnt in this? So much of discussion, etc. Conceptually, what have we learned? Two minutes. Okay. Or what have we learned? Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah
on the basic principles you can or uh, unsolvable you can affirmate it and you think the unknown and the known things are temperature emissivity area the geometry of that so from unknown to from uh, unformulated to formulated by putting this known things you can find that thing so only difference between conduction residue analogy electrical analogy to uh, radiation analogy is that there we took temperature as a potential but here we are taking emissive power as a potential that is that is the that is the difference emissive right? power or radio uh, radiosity whatever radiosity. something which is related to energy content okay that is what we are going to take is just to ट rho vcp upon ha 1 upon ha is resistance and rho vcp is capacitance so i can do an experiment not taking by a thermocouple and a hot water but i can take rc circuit and demonstrate the same thing with rc circuit what i learnt in heat transfer that is in fact people earlier there are papers people have done experiments with electrical resistances and capacitances all this what we are network analogy is there no people have done experiments with resistances but you have to keep that resistance each resistance has to be kept as per which are representative of 1 minus epsilon i upon a epsilon i and 1 upon a1 f12 whatever potentials i get they are supposed to be the answers so now you make as complicated as possible your network is if you cannot solve you can make an experiment you can do an experiment of course today's world whatever be the complicated you can solve it but earlier people have done that in fact even in vibration we have studied in vibration what did we study mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx equal to forcing function that also can be written in the form of resistance capacitance and damping so everything what we want to say is whether it is electrical circuit whether it is vibration whether it is heat transfer you understand one same thing you can understand you can it can aid in understanding others yeah why did we why did we like reynolds analogy why did we like reynolds analogy that is there strength is there the question answer is there what did i say about reynolds analogy stanton number equal to cfx by 2 why was i so excited about it if i measure friction factor i get nusselt number i don't have to do the experiments for heat transfer we all know that doing experiments for fluid mechanics is much easier than heat transfer so i, I this is a shortcut to put it in layman terms this is a shortcut analogical approach is always a shortcut yes it is going to give because the equations are same why will it not give oh yes you can you can do it and demonstrate no two ways of that is the strength of analogy that is why why we always try to put electrical resistances because we have studied from high school days the resistance approach and we can feel it very easily that is the reason this electrical resistance approach is always appreciated that is what we are going to study next that's what we are going to study in man in fact holman is taking more than 3 he formulates for 4 5 6 enclosure he is taking 6 when i say he is taking a complete enclosure so when you go back home please open your holmans and solve the all the solved problems solved problems are plenty unsolved of course plenty are there so solved problems itself we can solve anyway i think we will break for tea